Have you ever made snail chicken kebab at home as good and elegant as this? Today I'm gonna teach you a very delicious, super elegant chicken kebab along with roasted potato and awesome mushroom sauce. I'm sure you're gonna fall in love with it. What's up guys, Abed Motasemi here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have another kebab recipe for you. Very delicious, super elegant and easy. It's called snail chicken kebab. It's kinda cool and looks like snail shell. Without further ado, let's go make this kebab. In this recipe, we're gonna use chicken filet and you can use chicken breast instead, but do not use chicken leg. All right, for raw meat, chicken in particular, and in general poultry meat, always try to have a separate cutting board. Because chicken has bacteria which cause a lot of disease like salmonella and killing those bacteria requires a very good cleaning. Another pro tip, if your cutting board moves like this, it's gonna be very likely that you cut your hand while cutting the chicken. So what you're gonna do, is place a towel underneath and then put the cutting board on top and this way you secure the cutting board. Here I have two pounds chicken filet and all measures from now on, it's gonna be based on two pounds chicken meat. I also have a piece of chicken breast just to show you if you use chicken breast, how to cut the meat. First, we gotta remove this excess skin which you can remove it very easily with your fingers. Also, I have a tendon here so you gotta remove that too. Removing tendon is very easy thing. All you need is a sharp knife and then move the knife underneath the tendon and release the tip, just like this. Hold the tendon with one hand and move the knife gently on the tendon forward. There you go. Next, I'm gonna take care of the chicken breast. First, I'm gonna start with removing the excess fat. You have to remove this excess fat, otherwise they're gonna smoke and make your kebab look very ugly. First, I'm gonna butterfly the chicken, which means cutting it lengthwise, just the way I'm showing you. Then I'm gonna slice the chickens like half inch wide. Just like this. There you go, these are our chicken strips. Next, grab a large bowl and then put the chickens in the bowl. In the next step, I'm gonna add the saffron water. Look how thick and beautiful it is. You gotta be careful, you have to make your saffron water very thick and syrupy like this, which means more saffron and less water. If your saffron water is watery, the chickens are not gonna get color, which means you're gonna use more saffron, which means more cost. Also, more water on the chicken means drier chicken in the end. All right, now add two to three tablespoon thick saffron water to the chickens and mix that all very well. You have to add saffron water as much as the chicken's color become like this. Another very important pro tip, the order of adding ingredients is extremely important. If you add the onion and other ingredients to the chicken before adding the saffron, the onion is going to absorb all the saffron water and doesn't let the saffron does its job which is coloring the chicken. Always first add the saffron, let the chicken rest for 20 minutes, and then add the rest of the ingredients. Put the chicken aside and let them rest for 20 minutes. I've got onion and chili here. You can either use green bell pepper or jalapeno. I'm using jalapeno here today. For two pound chicken, you need 200 grams or one medium sized onion plus 50 gram pepper either half a green bell pepper or one jalapeno. As I also mentioned in my previous videos, if you are slicing onion for marination, you have to slice it orbital or perpendicular to the layers of the, of the onion. This way more acidity comes out of the onion, which means it's gonna marinate your chicken a lot faster and better. Also slice your onions very thinly for the same reason that I just mentioned. All right, next grab a large bowl and dump the onions in there. Next we are going to slice our jalapeno, remove the stem. Then cut it in half and remove all the seeds inside. Then slice them like little strips or julienne the way I'm showing you. Then add the pepper to the onion. Next we're gonna add two tablespoons or juice of one lemon to the ingredients. Then I'm gonna add two tablespoons Dijon mustard along with two tablespoons mayo to the rest of the ingredients. I've got three cloves of garlic so I'm gonna crush it first and then add it to the bowl. Now it's time to add the spices. Half tablespoon or two grams paprika, half tablespoon or two grams cayenne pepper, and one tablespoon or 12 grams kosher salt. Then crush and mix all the ingredients very well with your hands until the juice comes out of the onion and pepper. Then I'm gonna add the chicken to the marination stuff and one more time mix that all very well. Finally, we're gonna add three tablespoon neutral flavor oil to the bowl and mix that all very well for the final round. Oil does two very important things for us. First, it's gonna help the marination stuff adhere to the chicken. Second, doesn't let the air touch the chickens while they're resting in the fridge and therefore they're not gonna dry out after cooking. Then I'm gonna cover the chickens very well with plastic wrap for the same reason I told you, they cannot be exposed to the air and then put the lid back on. Another pro tips for restaurant owners, the best container to marinate meat in general 
is a stainless steel container. Because the stainless steel preserve coldness a lot better and that marinate our meat a lot better and faster. I'm gonna let the chickens rest in the fridge for at least six hours or preferably overnight to get marinated very well. But around one hour before we wanna cook the kebabs, I'm gonna make the stuff that I'm going to serve the kebabs with. Today I'm gonna teach you a very delicious crispy baked potato that I'm sure you're gonna fall in love with. I've got three russet potatoes here. And russet potato is the best for baking potatoes and french fries in particular because it has very high amount of starch and very low amount of moisture. The end result gonna be very crispy. So let's go peel them off. We're gonna slice our potatoes like medium sized cube, just like this size. Grab a large bowl and dump the potatoes in there and go wash the potatoes very well with water. First I'm gonna pour one to one and a half liter hot water to my pot, then add one tablespoon kosher salt along with one teaspoon baking soda to the water. Next dump the potatoes very gently in the hot water and be very careful so hot water does not splash back to your face. After two minutes take out the potatoes and put them in a large bowl. Next I'm gonna add one tablespoon kosher salt along with half tablespoon cornstarch to the potatoes. I've got peanut oil here which is perfect for frying and when you want to have a very crispy result. But if you don't have this oil or you have allergy to it, it's fine, go ahead and use any frying oil. Next I'm gonna add 4 tablespoons peanut oil and I'm gonna mix everything together very well for 30 seconds. Now I'm gonna bring my non-stick baking tray and dump the potatoes in there. Then I'm gonna lay out the potato pieces with a little space apart just like this. In the oven at 375 Fahrenheit or 220 Celsius for 25 to 35 minutes or until they get golden brown. All right, let's go make a very delicious mushroom sauce which goes great with this kebab. Here I've got around 200 grams or 12 mushrooms. You can either use white or bella mushroom. First, I'm gonna slice my mushroom very thinly, just like the size I'm showing you. I've got about 20 grams or a handful of parsley, so I'm gonna chop it very finely. Also make sure to take out the potatoes halfway through and turn them around to make sure both sides get crispy and golden brown. Look at this side, so awesome. Now again back in the oven. In a very hot pan, first I'm gonna dump the mushrooms. After about one minute or when the mushrooms are heated up, add one tablespoon butter along with two tablespoon neutral flavor oil to the mushrooms. Then I'm gonna stir constantly so the mushrooms cook evenly. Then I'm gonna add juice of half a lemon to the mushrooms and mix that all very well. Crush four to five cloves of garlic and add it to the mushrooms. Now I'm gonna lower the heat and add two tablespoon chopped parsley to the rest of the ingredients. Add one tablespoon chicken bouillon to the mushrooms and mix that all very well. Now kill the heat and in two rounds add one cup or 120 grams heavy cream and stir constantly. Finally I'm gonna grate a little parmesan cheese and add it to the sauce along with a pinch of salt to taste. And there you go, the sauce is ready to go. So now I'm gonna start skewing our kebabs. I'm gonna start with our veggies. So here I have mushrooms, tomato, chilies, and red bell pepper. So I'm gonna use this for in between our um, chicken kebabs. All right, I'm gonna put the veggies aside for now and start skewing the chickens. But before skewing the chickens, I'm gonna slice my red bell pepper the way I'm showing you. Just like this, large cubes. Wow, it smells amazing. Also make sure to remove these onions and pepper that they stick to the chicken because they're gonna burn while we are cooking them. All right, for the pieces from the chicken breast, all you gotta do is to turn it around itself so it's gonna look like the snail shell, just like this. But for the filet, you gotta cut it with your knife from the thin part, not all the way through, a little over halfway through, just like the way I'm showing you. Then turn it around itself to shape it like snail shell and the end result gonna look like this. Now we're gonna start skewing the chickens. First start with a piece of pepper and then one chicken. The way you poke the chicken rolls is also very important. As you can see, one side of the roll is open. So you gotta poke it from the other side, from the close side, to make sure you secure it in place and they're not gonna be open while you're cooking them. Just like the way I'm showing you. After the first piece, another piece of bell pepper. Bell pepper does two things for me. First, it's gonna make my kebab look very beautiful and professional. Second, which is the most important one, is gonna hold the chicken roll in place so they are not gonna be open while we are cooking them. And then the second piece of the chicken. And trust me, it's gonna be very easy. Just need a little bit practice. And here is the end result. Look how beautiful this skewer of chicken kebab is. There you go, we are done with the skewing. Let's go cook them. Finally, we got to our cooking process. So I'm gonna start with our veggie first because they're gonna cook a lot faster. 
Also turn the skewers every 30 seconds to make sure they're all gonna cook all the way through and evenly. As I said, chilies cook very fast, so these are ready to go. The tomatoes and mushrooms are also ready to go. If you wanna have a juicy kebab, do not overcook your chickens. Totally five minutes is completely enough. So look, this kebab is ready to go and I'm pretty sure it's very juicy. Our potatoes are ready and look how crispy they are. Dump the potatoes in a large bowl, then add a pinch of garlic powder along with a little bit of chopped parsley. Next, I'm gonna add one to two tablespoons basil oil that I made it myself, along with a little bit grated Parmesan cheese. If you wanna learn homemade basil oil, please leave in the comment for me so I can make it in the next video. Mix that all very well and the potatoes are ready to go. Let's try one. Very, very delicious. I'm gonna grab a very large platter because my skewers are very large. Then place the chicken kebab very gently on the platter, just the way I'm showing you. Now brush a little hot butter on the kebabs. Oh my God. Plate my potatoes on one side. After that, my grilled tomato, grilled mushroom, my beautiful chilies, onion and chopped parsley, cooked carrot, pickles, lime, and finally a small bowl filled with our awesome mushroom sauce. And there you go. This is my royal snail chicken kebab. Look how beautiful and elegant it is. And that's it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please support my channel by simply like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you are new here. So until the next video, have a good one.